Welcome back to my ES6 series. In this video, we'll be covering arrow functions. The basic syntax of an arrow function is as follows. It uses the parentheses equal greater than to define the function. The ES5 equivalent is found below. An inline return can be done by removing the curly braces. The expression is evaluated and the result returned to the calling function. You're only able to perform one line of code in inline arrow functions. An inline object can also be returned by surrounding the object definition with the parentheses. So you can see in the make name object, I take first, middle, and last parameters and create an object that has those three properties on them with those three values. If I output the result of the arrow function, you can see the object definition there. Next, there's the single parameter notation. Before I show the syntax, I suggest not to use it. The single parameter notation really blends the code more so that you can't really see the definition. And if you use the parentheses, you can see where the parameters end and the function begins. So you can see the, the declaration below. If, in the collection.map, I define the callback to be a uh, arrow function that returns the element doubled. Item is the name of the parameter, and you can see it's not using parentheses. My preference would have been to define the arrow function as below. Next, we'll cover the this keyword. The this keyword in ES5 is assigned to the context of each function. In strict mode, it would return undefined. This was handled in ES5 by aliasing the this variable outside the context of an interior function. Here, you can see the, the definition of a name object and in the first few lines, what we do is we declare self to equal this, which is the instance of the name object. And on that instance, we're assigning name string. Inside that timeout, we can reference self.nameString and it'll actually output that constructed string. Arrow functions, however, use the contextual this of its parent function. So here's that same constructor and we do two different timeouts. The first one, we use an arrow function and reference this.nameString. That functions as it would have in the ES5 example before. However, if we were used to, to use an, a function declaration and attempt to do this.nameString, it returns undefined because this.nameString within the context of that function is not defined on the object. So why do we use arrow functions? They're significantly more concise. They're a lot more streamlined and a little less verbose. Next, the this variable is easier to understand within the context of an arrow function than it is with an alias this variable. Here you can see my type, which is using arrow functions and this, but the ES5 equivalent, you have to alias it first and then set it. So you end up with almost twice the code. ES6 arrow functions are one of my favorite syntaxes added to the language and I've been using them for a very long time. There's something that you'll see a lot throughout the remainder of the videos, so I hope you paid attention. Um, as always, contact me on LinkedIn and Twitter, follow me on YouTube, comments below, all that good stuff. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.